lunch. And for this speech, we'll be with Moni, Moni sorry, and she'll be talking about Hoppersolve, a program for matching and transformation tool. Would you please welcome for Moni. So good afternoon everyone. Welcome to the talk on Coxinal, a program matching and transformation tool. Can you all hear me clearly? Yeah. So I'm Mangi Saragi from India. I'm currently an undergraduate computer science student at International Institute of Information Technology, Hyderabad. I worked as a Linux kernel intern with the FOSS Outreach Program for Women in the last summers under the guidance of my mentor, Julia Laval from India. So my project was titled Coxinal. So how many of you have heard of the word coccinal earlier? Like just a quick show of hands. Okay. Coccinal is basically a French word which means a bug that can eat other bugs. So what we are trying to do here is to create a semantic patch that would generate other patches solving. So coming to my work on coccinal. My project during the summers was titled Up and Harden Coccinal Scripts to integrate into the kernel. So the first thing that I had to do is to identify bugs that could be solved using the coccinal. So we have a huge repository of coccinal scripts called coccinary. And I went through the scripts to identify what kind of bugs are possibly solved by coccinal. Subsequently, I found such cases of bugs and sent in patches, solving them to know whether it's an issue of actual concern. Coxinal scripts were developed to fix those bugs and the results produced by running them across the kernel were analyzed to ensure that there were not many false positives and also that the results were covering all the possible cases. Then patches were sent to include the coccinal scripts and some of them have found their way into the Linux kernel. Coming to why do we need coccinal? Bugs are unfortunately everywhere. And systems code, like Linux, is often huge and rapidly changing. It is often written in C. Linux, being a highly critical software, needs to be less buggy. It's used everywhere, on the servers, desktops, embedded systems. So having less bugs is definitely a plus. Coming to the Linux, we have a number of developers with varied levels of experience computing. We have maintainers, developers of proprietary software, etc. So there might be people who are new to the, uh, to the code base and they, not, they might not be aware of previously existing and possible bugs. And new, uh, new bugs might be introduced. Coming to some common programming problems. Progra programmers don't really understand sometimes how C works. An example is the NOT E1 and E2, where the precedence of NOT is higher than AND while the intended thing might be a negation of E1 and E2. A second example is having similar APIs, where we would have a common API but create another specific function for a specific use. Having a uniform function for the same purpose is always beneficial. Coming to the third case where a function call might return an error, but we do not go ahead and test whether the return value is an error and use it for further processing. So there is a strong need for pervasive code changes. This is an example of the bad bit and case where we have a not expression with a uh, and ended with a constant. Here, especially DMA start bit has the last bit as zero. So the result is always zero. Here usage example. We use PCI map single. Instead of DMA map single, the only difference between them is that the first argument for PCI map single is a PCI dev, dev while for the DMA map single, it would be a pointer to the EV field. Here is an example of missing error check. Key malloc returns a null when there is insufficient memory. If we do not check whether the return value of alloc is null, then we would face a crash at alloc dash size. This is an example of collateral evolutions. We have a number of libraries which provide APIs to be used by clients, but these libraries themselves could be changing. For example, we have a function called just one integer argument, 
and now it is replaced by a function bar which takes two arguments where the, where the first one is the same. All the clients that had been calling the function foo need to be modified to use the function bar where the first argument remains the same and the second argument needs to be figured out. So why is collateral evaluation significant? We have a number of libraries with a lot of clients and a lot of drivers support libraries which could be one per device type, one per bus, examples being PCI library, sound library, etc. There is a lot of device specific code calling these libraries. Drivers make up more than 50% of Linux. Many evolutions and collateral evolutions keep occurring. Some examples are adding arguments, splitting data structures, adding or removing getter and setter functions, etc. So there is a requirement for automation. Some of the major requirements being the ability to abstract over irrelevant information. In, the, in this case, we do not need to know what the name of the expression is. So DMA CNTRL needs to be abstracted. We need to match scattered code fragments at times. As we saw in the kmalloc case, the dereference was far from where kmalloc uh, was being used to initialize. We should have the ability to transform code fragments, like replacing the PCI map single by DMA map single, and vice versa. Some of our goals with Coxinal. The first major thing is bug finding and fixing. We need to automatically match code to find patterns of a particular bug and then automatically transform it to fix those bugs. For collateral evolutions, whenever a library changes, we need to find patterns of interaction with the library and then systematically transform the interaction code. What Coxinal can do? Coxinal does static analysis to find patterns in C code. Automatic transformation of the code is done to fix those bugs. We can run Coxinal patches in four modes to get different results. The first mode is the patch mode, which finds the cases and makes the transformations to generate patches. The next is the context mode, which can be used to mark out any positions of interest and places of bugs. The next is the all which lists in a to-do format with the exact line number and position of a bug, like an error or a warning. Report logs a custom message where the error or warning occurs. Coming to the Coxinal tool. So it is used for program matching and transformation for unpre-processed C code. We can have scripts that can be run every time a change is ma being made to a file to ensure those specific bugs are being introduced. A single small semantic can modify hundreds of files at thousands of code sites. What is the semantic patch based language? It's based on the syntax of patches. Semantic patch basically abstracts the, and generalizes patches. It's a declarative approach to transformation. It does a high level search and abstracts away from irrelevant details. Some of the irrelevant details, we do not need to worry about spacing, indentation, and comments. We can give names to statements, expressions, constants, etc. These names are often called meta variables. We can skip irre irrelevant code using a triple dot, which is called the control flow operator. We have variations in coding styles, and these are abstracted by isomorphisms. So, a not y, y equal to equal to null, and null equal to equal to y are all the same, and mentioning any one of them in the patch will match all the three. So, it's a patch like notation with a minus and a plus for expressing transformations. How does Coxinal work? So, we, Coxinal basically passes a control flow graph, and it pa passes a semantic patch after expanding the isomorphisms to get the computational tree logic. The control flow graph and the computational tree logic are subsequently matched to using a model checking algorithm. Any matches found are modified, and finally we unparse it to get the transform C code. 
some examples. So finding the unfixing the not x. So combining a Boolean expression with a constant is usually meaningless. Especially if the rightmost bit of y had been zero, the result would always be a zero. So the solution here would be to add parenthesis. Here's an example where we have a function call and with a constant called CCI PMU overflow flag. So here we need to negate the expression obtained after the and. This is the semantic path that does that. So we have meta variables and constants. So as you can see in the second part, we are removing any occurrence of not E and constant and replacing it with the corresponding statement with added parenthesis. So here we are dealing with a very special case where the y, the not x and y, is a constant. We have a disjunction here because an expression of the form c is likely to be intentional. Coming to the second example, we have inconsistent API usage. We, we do not actually need a function PCI map single that calls a DMA map single again. So instead, we would like to make a transformation by removing PCI map single and replacing it with a DMA map single. But for that, we'll have to have the first argument as a pointer to a DEV field and also replace constants of PCI type with the corresponding DMA constants. This path that does that. Here we have four meta variables of type expression which are the four arguments of the PCI map single. So PCI map single is deleted and we add the function DMA map single which takes the first argument as the pointer to the DEV field. First of the first argument that was present. After making this transformation, we now have a DMA map single function instead of PCI map single functions everywhere. So we match the fourth argument with the and remove them and replace them with the corresponding DMA constants. This is the third example where we are dereferencing a possible null value. As you can see, SK is assigned to the SK field of TUN and after that we are checking whether TUN is a null. So TUN may be dereferenced before the null check. So this is a semantic path that does the transformation to remove any assignment for a null check. So we have some meta variables and correspondingly we try to find an expression which is being dereferenced and assigned to some value and we do have a null check on that expression after that. So what we are doing here is that if we have a, a statement of the type ti which is assigned with the dereference field and we skip some lines and after that we check whether the expression is null, we move the assignment to the statement after the null check. But in that case, we need to ensure that the skipped code does not use E and I anywhere. And also E is not being passed to a function as an address. So another important point to, be, uh, to note here is that E equal to equal to null will match with not E and null equal to equal to E as well due to isomorphisms. Coming to dev M functions. We have a number of functions to allocate resources and these resources need to be freed after being allocated. Some examples are case-alloc, k-malloc, etc. So we do have a corresponding devm version which are the managed versions and we do not need to worry about freeing the resources. So if we do not have a free, we would lead to memory leaks. So using a managed interface is always a plus point. So in the proof function, we will try to transform any memory allocated using a function like case alloc to the corresponding managed version and remove any k freeze that occur in the proof function driver. So here is a semantic pass that would do that. So the first rule is the platform rule, which tries to find 
a probe function and remove function and gets their names in the identifiers probe fn and remove fn. The second rule called PRB inherits the name of the probe function from the first rule. It tries to find that probe function, the prototype and it matches whether the first argument is a platform device structure. Subsequently in the body it checks whether we have any allocations using case alloc. If we do have, these are transformed to devm case alloc. This argument is changed to a pointer to the P, uh, P device. Now the third R depends on PR, which means it will run only if we do make a transformation from a case alloc to a devm case alloc. In this rule, we inherit the remove fn name from the platform and remove any k freeze that occur in the body of the remove function. This is an example of collateral evolution. So the SCSI get and SCSI put functions were dropped from the SCSI library. This required collateral evolution in all the proc info callback functions where we had to add a new parameter and remove any declarations of SCSI in body where we were using function calls to SCSI get and SCSI put. Also, if we add the parameter as an argument, we do not need to check whether it's a null in the function body. Here is the semantic part that helps to do this. We have a meta variable for the function called a proc info and identifiers and y. We do away with all the declarations of an SCSI, the calls to get and put and the null checking in the function body and add the argument SCSI star y to the function. Running this path gives us one of these transformations. So here what happens is in the function S53C700info, instead of having just one argument limit, we have two parameters, limit and SCSI star SC. In the function body, we do not have the declaration SCSI star SC and the calls to get input functions and also we skip over the null checking. The remaining code remains as it is. How do scripts in look like? As we had mentioned that we have four modes. So till now we were running in the path mode itself. But we could have paths run of the four modes. So we need to mention that we have four modes, path, context, and report. Subsequently, we need to have rules for all the four modes. So this script basically removes any expression of the type if e bug and replaces it with a bug on e. Bug on is basically a, ma a macro and it's more uniform and better to use it. So the first rule depends on context and it will run if we are running the path in the context mode. So it marks out any, ch any positions where we have a if expression bug. The, uh, so we use a star operator for that. Then we have the normal patch mode which will delete lines with if expression bug and add a bug on expression. The next is the org and report mode. Org and report mode needs to find a position where that error or warning or that position of interest occurs. So we use a position variable, position p. Using the statement if expression with an iterate p, Gives us, uh, gives us the position of that particular statement in the variable p. Subsequently, we can write a Python script that gets the value of the position p as an array of structures. Those structures would have a file name, line number, column number, etc. So after getting the value of position as an array of structures, we print uh, the positions in a to-do format for the org mode and in the, with a custom message in the report mode. Things to remember while using Coxinal. 
the semantic patches might have multiple rules. And these rules are always applied file by file in the same order as they appear. We can have a star just to mark out where the changes are likely to occur without actually making any transformations. The context mode, as we saw. Positions can be marked, and any relevant information, such as line number and the variable names, can be printed as messages. So, another use would be not just to make transformations, but to make searches as well. As we saw in the probe function, remove function, if we need to find a function which is a probe function, we can list out all the probe functions that ever occur using just this rule running over the entire driver directory. So we can check whether the syntax of the script written is right using the parse coxy option. There are some imperfections with coxnet. Whenever we are parsing the C file, we need to expand all the header files that are included, which might be interleaved and lead to a huge amount of code to be parsed. But if we do not need any macro expansions or any ex things that might be included in the header files, we can the expansion of the header files using the option no include, include headers. The major issue is pretty The transformations that are made do not follow the 80 character rule and there might be some extra spaces etc that need to be solved multiple times. If there is a small error in the script, it is not very easy to debug that as running the parse coxy or trying to make the transformations would give you an error message that is not very informative. So here we can see that we get an error message called line 6 column 2. So that position might have the bug but that's also not very accurate at times. To the conclusion, coxin is a path like programming mapping and transformation tool. We have over 450 patches made using coxnil in two Linux kernel. Nine coxnil patches are in the Linux kernel itself in the coxnil slash scripts directory. And any coxy check for running them on the whole kernel, a subdirectory, or files with uncommitted changes. Coxnil semantic patches look like the normal patches and fit very comfortably with the system program. They're very easy and are widely accepted by the Linux community. Probable bugs have been found in other, C, uh, other open source repositories using C. Examples include GCC, VLC, Vine, etc. Thank you. Any questions? Watch it. Um, at this point, if anyone would like any questions to ask for Margie, I'll call for any questions out there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Next to me. Uh, are the patches reversible? Yes. So we can have a, we have a option to make the changes. So we can add a in place to actual, actually make the changes or we can uh, we cannot, if we do not use the in place, we can actually have all the patches written to a file instead of being transformed actually. The code will remain as it is and we'll just have all the patches. Okay. My second question was early on you had a replacement of a constant. Um, yes. Uh, yeah. No, I'll back a bit further, I think. Okay. <laughs> it was right at the beginning. Uh, I've forgotten which one it was. Yeah. But, um, you'd already pat matched a fair bit, and you said, now there, this should be this constant. Please replace it with that constant. Okay. What happens if you don't find the, the requisite constant? Oh, PCI constant? DMA ones, yeah. 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 Uh, I didn't get you. So, so you had replaced this constant yes. with the other one after all this pattern matching is done. Yes. And I assume one of the initial constant had to be there. That one. That one. Yeah. What happens if it's not there? Okay. If we do not replace the PCI DMA uh, constants with the DMA constants. Okay. 
actually nothing would happen but we are using the dma function call so having a uniform use of constants would also be desirable okay any other questions okay i was just going to ask if you had your slides up on your website yes keep <laughs> 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 it told <laughs> I came in right at the end and I wanted to see it. <laughs> Is uh, Costanel able to, say, transform variable names? Yes. So, in terms of, in a pattern like way rather than explicitly? Say yes, a as in we can find. That you want to extract off and remove the prefix from a class of variable names. Yes, we can do that. So we can find the a particular variable name using a particular rule, and we can mark out all positions of those variables. Once we get the positions, we can replace those positions with the new variable name. So that is possible. That's pretty possible. As in, we can replace a function name, so we can obviously replace a variable name as well. Last chance roll call for any questions. We've got a little bit of time left. No? Okay. Well, on that note, I'd like to thank Hamanji for her speech. And as on a behalf of the LCA team, please take this gift. Paul. Yes. And could you give a, a big thank you to Hamanji for her speech, please?